Sabdeye, Le Ailu Nishmat, his beloved mother, Ivet Sasson de Sabdeye, Bat Clotilde and Ishak, that today, Friday, is the day of her Askara. Additionally, today's class, graciously sponsored by Mr. Joe Biju Mizrahi, Le Ailu Nishmat, his beloved father, Abraham Ben Regina, Alava Shalom. Today, special breakfast and class, graciously sponsored, La Ilui Nishmet, the legendary Mr. Mickey Carey, Meir Ben Latife, Alava Shalom. Additionally, today's class, graciously sponsored by the Rothberg family from New York, La Ilui Nishmet, a pure soul, Esther Tehillah, Bat Mordechai, as well as La Ilui Nishmet, Rabbi Moshe Ben Shemuel Rafael, a great a community member of Am Israel that helped a tremendous amount of people throughout his life. And the family also expresses their infinite gratitude to Akadosh Baruch Hu for all the bountiful blessings that he showers upon them every day. May the family continue to share in many happiness and good things for the life. And may we all experience the ultimate blessing for mankind, Mashiach's arrival. Amen. Amen. Additionally, Today's class. I hope that the class will be longer than the announcements. Okay, I can't. I can't compete with that. This is the. This is what people do, and I like to uh, satisfy everybody. Uh, also, today's class, graciously sponsored by the Nahon Brothers for the Rfua Shelema of his hand, Ben Esther, as well as the Rfua Shelema Ava Shlomit Batilana Esther Hana Haya Bat Rifka, and also Mr. Albert Dweck honoring for the speedy recovery of Dr. Elif Tiha, Eliyahu ben Rahel among the Holim of all of Am Israel. Amen. So somebody the other day asked me, Rabbi, all these names, how much they cost to announce each name? So I said to the person, it's a great question. It's a great question, right? So every sponsorship for a class, a day of class, is only 180 if you do a bundle of classes, 620, a 720, you get six classes, you get a discount of 30%. That does not include food. If you want food sponsorship like we have today, you have different layers in the menu. Basic will be 180, I believe, for one million. Deluxe, like you're enjoying it now, 500. Not bad, and this is literally cost, or sometimes we may even lose money. But this is done Leshem Shabaim, and this is to enhance the Neshama of the people learning. So, as I said before, today is the yard side of Mr. Mickey Carey. I actually have five pages to speak about him, which I'm not going to do that because tomorrow we have two Sefer Torahs, so I got to cover two aspects of Torah learning. But, as I said inside, Mr. Mickey Carey, Alava Shalom. Uh, was our Torah reader here at the synagogue in Tembury for close to 30 years. Literally, close to 30 years. And this is besides his community life and teachings in Brooklyn, in Brooklyn, in Deal, in the summer, etc. He was a teacher of thousands. And we, knew, we know for a fact that a whole one or two generations of Syrian young boys went through Bar Mitzvah lesson and Ketab lesson. We have one of them here. You're looking at another one in front of me. But he taught me post my Bar Mitzvah when I met him here many years back. And he had such a love for the community, such a love for the Torah, and such a love for Am Israel. He was a medic uh, in the Second War, right? Second War. And uh, one time he, he was put in jail. Why was he put in jail? Because he beat up an Italian Gentile who made a derogatory against the Jewish people. And he was approached by his general, and he said, why did you do that? He says, how will you feel if they curse your mother? How will you feel if they curse your country and your religion? He says, okay, I understand, but next time don't do it. So he got off the hook easy. He loved not only the reading, but he loved listening to Torah classes. I remember vividly, Hamabdil, he will sit exactly where you're sitting now. And this is before the days of recordings and machines. He will sit 
like a child in a candy shop. This is how he will absorb the ways of the Torah and the lessons of the Torah, even though he knew a lot, because then he will talk to me after the class and he will share me with me different mefashim and different pirushim on the perashiot. So you can see that he was a learned man. Unfortunately, he did not marry to have children. But as the Gemara writes, the students of a person are considered the children. So maybe he did not have biological children, but for sure he had a lot of children in his account in Shabbat. As you remember, he was a petite fellow. Very short, very petite, but he was a giant of a, a man in all aspects uh, of life. He, he good tennis players, he's reminding me. Hazaku Baruch, beautiful, good to know that. And also, he was a wonderful, wonderful Hazan. If you go to the Pismonim website, pismonim.org, which is the red book online, you'll see him as well as many wonderful and legendary Hazanim, some which are no longer among the living, and some that Baruch Hashem are alive and well, but you get to hear the sweetness of his voice, the melody, and his uh, essence of uh, life. So Yehi Ratzon, that Be'ezat Hashem, his neshama, be elevated in Gan Eden, and he'll be a good Melitz Yosher, a good advocate, for the community and for Am Israel. Amen. 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 I cannot begin the class after. They used to take care of all the departed men. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me that Mr. Mickey Carey also had a very holy work in the Syrian community with us to do, I believe, with the Hebra Kaddisha, Hesed Shel Emet, right? And he will deal with every unfortunate situation that came across the community. This is not a, a job a, a that gets paid. This is volunteers. Literally, Hebra Kazisha is a volunteer. Hesed Shel Emet. But it's, it's something that most people run away from it. Run away from it. They don't want to deal with funerals every day. But he had this uh, desire to help and he did it in a faithful and in a holy manner. Let's switch the topic at this moment when it comes to this Shabbat. As I announced inside, this Shabbat we're going to be taking out two sefers. First sefer, Perashat Bayakel, Kaddish, sefer number two, Perashat Shekalim. Perashat Shekalim is the beginning of Perashat Kitisa, the first of the four Perashiot that are going to be read from this Shabbat all the way till Shabbat Rosh Chodesh Nisan. That's why tomorrow, when we take out the second Sefer, we're going to read a special Aftara. Not the Aftara of the week, but the Aftara of Vayichrot Yehoyada. Since we have two Sefers, so you're going to say two Kaddish. Kaddish for the first, Kaddish for the second. And what happened in a synagogue that only has one Sefer and doesn't have a second Sefer? The Lacha says, since you're rolling the Sefer Torah from one Perasha to the other, that also qualifies to be able to recite a Kaddish at the end of Sefer Torah number two. I try to cover a lot of topics, and you got to see my, 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 my brain. It's like information highway, like uh, the LA freeway that you have all directions. I'm trying to mentally, as I'm speaking, to sort out my thoughts in the order of the way that I think that they should be discussed. Let's talk about an action plan about the unfortunate situation in Ukraine. Even though in this part of the world, we are to a certain extent just watching as an spectator, but don't fool yourself with that statement. We are paying the price, like it or not. You're paying the price of gasoline, you're paying the price of the stock market. Canada is concerned, especially from the North Pole. All this is on the political and financial arena. But let's be honest here. The fact that this war that's going on is affecting millions of people, and we're talking about millions in their country, and especially the many casualties 
that have been already there. <coughs> Even yesterday I saw a report that in Uman, in Uman, the famous city where the Bin Ahman of Breslev is buried, there has been an evacuation order because there are a couple of military areas not far, strategically important, and many people are trying to leave. You have to understand, leaving is not so easy because the next border is a 10 to 12 hour drive. You understand? Yes, the border to Poland. Poland opened the doors to welcome all the refugees from the Ukraine. So it's not so simple. Traveling from place to place, it became a, a literally sakana. So what do we do from this part of the world to help the situation up there. So I'll need to share with the Kahal Kadosh, besides what I said inside, the importance of welcoming the Shabbat perhaps a few moments before actually Shabbat begins, but I think that we need to go a minute to the Midrash Rabbah in Perashat Noah. The Perashat Noah in the Midrash Rabbah. You know, there is a, a powerful sentence that we are familiar with because it's part of the prayers of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Perhaps in the Ashkenazi tradition, this is more popular than in the Sephardic book. In the Sephardic book, is there more as an optional prayer, not as a required prayer? But I'll tell you a secret. In the Ashkenazic world, in order to hire a Hazan, for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, you know what they ask him to sing? What I'm going to say now. Untane Tokef. That was a special prayer written by Rabbi Amnon of Magenza, alava shalom, a great holy rabbi who died sanctifying God's names when he was threatened to become a convert to Christianity. That's the background of this <coughs> holy prayer. And it's a very, uh, 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 how do I say this, very heartfelt. A deep, heartfelt prayer that talks about the words of Hashem, how God makes decisions in the person's life, who is going to live, who is not going to live, who is going to live successfully, and who is going to live in a poor manner, who is going to leave the world through stones, through water, through fire. Look at Surfside. How did that happen? All of the above. Right. And still we don't know what happened. Maybe 30 years from now we're going to know. That's usually the way history is playing out. After 30, 50 years they release the documents. But today it's not about Surfside, despite the fact that Surfside is a, is a, is a fresh tragedy. And we hope for the best on that department. But let's review together what this prayer says. Quoting the Midrash Tarhuma, which this is a formula for salvation. Everybody needs salvation. Do you know someone who doesn't need salvation? If you're a human, you need salvation. Even if the person is gone, the person needs salvation. Sure. That's why you say certain chapters of the Hilim when it comes to the burial. For example, Yosheh Beseter Alion. Yosheh Beseter Alion. Why do you say that chapter in a funeral? That is the chapter of protecting the body of the disease. That's a different topic, not for today. Relax. Let's talk about the living better. You agree? Thank you so much. Baruch Atta Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOleam Sheakol Nihiyavit Baruch Amen. The Midrash Rabbah says, and the prayer says, Utshuba Utfila Uzdaka Ma'avirin Etroa HaGezera There is a negative decree. How do I get rid of it? How do I dispose of a negative decree? So the Pasuk says, the power of repentance, the power of prayer, and the power of charity. Utshuva, repentance. Utfila, 
prayer, uzdaka, charity, ma'avirin etroa hagezera. They remove the negative decree. That's the formula. So I ask the kahal that each one in their way, each one in their level, try to concentrate in the sentence that we discuss at this moment. Increasing, when you pray, your per personal prayers or your shaharit min harbit prayer, add a thought in your mind, Hashem bring peace to that region. And I say what I said before, besides the fact that there are 400,000 Jewish people in that part of the world, and this is only on the Ukrainian side, I'm not even talking about the Russian side, but Russia doesn't seem to be in war. The invasion happens to be in the Ukraine proper, but I believe so, correct? And the Ukrainians are just trying to defend themselves, and that's it. I don't think that anything is moving into Russia, but you know what? In, there are always casualties of war at all levels. So we hope and pray that the Zechut of the Shabbat and the Zechut of increased prayer charity and repentance by Ezzet Hashem reverses and puts into the heart of the leadership. Don't forget one thing. Lev Melech Besarim Beyad Hashem. King Solomon says, the heart of the kings and the princes are in the hands of the Almighty. So God is moving the pieces of the board. Look at a chess game. You have the pawn, you have the tower, you have the horse, king, queen, you have the knight, correct? I missed the knight. I think, I don't hear you. I think it's the joker. No, the joker is in the cards. No, the joker don't mix. Shalom. One is cards, chess, you have a joker? Never heard such a joke. Okay, so I gave you, I gave you the right line now. No, he said chess. I said chess, ajedrez in Spanish, but thank you. Chess bank. Okay, yeah, not chase bank. Okay, that's chess without the E, without the A, with, the, with an E on it. But anyways, a good commercial for chase bank, right? I'm not sure how they're doing, but I uh, hope they're doing good, right? Anyways, but uh, this is what we can do from here. We can influence in a spiritual way that the leadership has a change of heart. This is what's written in the Holy Books. Let's switch the topic. I'd like to speak about a few moments. Perasha Vayakhen. The first Perasha of this Shabbat reading. Obviously, the Maftir is very, very, very short. I'd like to quote an interesting Zohar Kadosh and many other sources. Let me give you an historical background about this perasha, so we understand what's going on in front of us. The Jewish people sin with the golden calf, correct? Moshe Rabbeinu broke the Luchot, Moshe Rabbeinu negotiated a deal with Hashem, as we learned in last week's Torah portion, perasha Kitisa, and Moshe Rabbeinu for 40 days prayed to the Almighty for forgiveness to come to the Jewish people in honor of these 40 days of Moshe praying and interceding in our behalf, we have what's called in Jewish law, Selichot. The reason why, according to the Sephardic tradition, we do Selichot 40 days, because these 40 days are the 40 days that Moshe Rabbeinu prayed for the Jewish people for forgiveness. From Rosh Chodesh Elul, Till the day of Yom Kippur. So, by Yakhel Moshe, when Moshe Rabbeinu gathers the Jewish people, this took place the day after Kippur. Kippur finished. God says, by Yom Hashem Salahti Kitbarecha. I forgave the Jewish people. Thanks to that deal, we have Yom Kippur. We finish Kippur. Now, we are considered what? Ba'al Teshuvah. We are individuals that return back to the ways of God. That's the meaning of a Ba'al Teshuvah. What's the meaning of a Ba'al Teshuvah? Someone that returns. Now we did Teshuvah. We went through 40 days of prayer. 
We did Kippur. Mazel Tov. We are a new creation. So what does Moshe Rabbeinu do? It says, Bayakhel Moshe et kol ha'adad b'nei Yisrael. After Kippur finishes, the next morning, Moshe Rabbeinu gathers all of the Jewish people. We're going to have a nation of Israel meeting with one speaker, Moshe Rabbeinu. Why did Moshe gather the Jewish people immediately the day after Yom Kippur? Short answer, because the last time that there was a gathering for the Jewish people, it turned out to be a disaster. When they gather against Aharon and Hur for the creation of this golden calf. So the calf, so therefore, what happens now? There was a gathering for a transgression. Now we need to remedy that gathering to have a gathering for good things. Now, you understand how it works? So comes Moshe Rabbeinu, and he says to the Jewish people, first misvah, the misvah of Shabbat. Why from all of the misvot of the Torah, Moshe Rabbeinu is telling the Jewish people, observe the Shabbat. The Pasuk says, go to work six days of the week, but Shabbat is a holiday. Take a sabbatical rest for the day. Why did Moshe Rabbeinu gave the Jewish people the first order of the day, Shabbat? And the question is going to, be, is going to become stronger because what part of Shabbat Moshe says to the Jewish people, don't turn on the fire on Shabbat. Right. And the question is why? Is this the main prohibition of the Shabbat? Carrying is an easier prohibition than turning a fire. We answer both questions one step at a time. So first of all, we need to know what's going to be happening the day after. Moshe Rabbeinu gives the Jewish people the commandment of building the Mishkan, of building a tabernacle. And that tabernacle, it consisted, consisted of 15 types of donations. It's like you go outside in the main lobby, you have a lineup of things that you can dedicate for the synagogue. I'm not fundraising at this time. If you need help, I help you to make a decision. I give you a flexible payment plan. I explain to you each item by itself. But imagine yourself, Moshe Rabbeinu makes an announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new mission. We need to build a house for God. We need to build a tabernacle that later on will become the holy temple, the Beit HaMikdash in Yerushalayim. These are the list of items that we need for the construction. Give anything you want. Gold, silver, copper, copper, wood, oil, wool, different uh, skin of animals, different colors, different types of wood. Whatever you want to give, give. Guess what? In two days, they covered the budget of the construction of the Mishkan and they had leftover change to the point that they had to send a message to the people. Stop giving. I don't think you hear from me this thing, all right? <laughs> Will you? No. <coughs> Can you imagine the Pasuk in the Torah? They said, enough. We have nowhere to put it. So Pasuk. Thank you, that's the Sof Pasuk. Not not Sof Pasuk. Anyways, can you imagine? Can you imagine we don't make Mishaberach for a whole year at our synagogue? That's going to affect the budget big time, right, Mr. Bracker? Hazaku Baruch. But imagine somebody says, Rabbi, I give you X amount, no Mishaberach for the year. Good deal. He said, okay, let me see the amount. I get an approval, right? But we're not going to say yes to that type of offer. We can accept the offer to supplement the Mishaberach. Why? Because we cannot avoid people 
of giving, correct? But let's not talk about fundraising. Chaz Shalom is not my intention today, but I'll go back to the perasha. In two days, they collected what they needed. Comes Moshe and it says, Shabbat. And we ask the question, why Shabbat? So the short answer is that Moshe is telling the Jewish people, even though that there is a mitzvah to build the Mishkan, but you cannot work on Shabbat even for God. Let's say that we need to build something in the synagogue. Rule number one to the construction firm will be which one? Besides doing everything by the city code, etc. What we're going to say to them? Oh, On Friday you? afternoon, leave at 3, 4 o'clock in the summer, a bit earlier in the winter. You can come back Sunday morning <coughs> or Monday. Don't work on Shabbat. Even though they may be going, but you know the halacha, that a goy cannot do something for a Jew that a Jew himself cannot do. So automatically, to build something for godliness on a Shabbat that is a day of rest is a contradiction to the Shabbat. That's the reason why Moshe Rabbeinu, because guess what? Now the Jewish people, they want to redeem themselves. What does it mean? What was the sin of the golden calf? What was it? Worship against God. Now Moshe Rabbeinu is giving them a lifeline. Guys, you had a complaint about godliness? Guess what? We're going to build a house for God. Oh, so this is the remedy for the sin of the golden calf? Yes. So in the desperation, the Jewish people may be tempted to expedite the construction to work on Shabbat. Moshe Rabbeinu says, stand ashwaya. No. Yes, your desperation of, of remedy the sin is great. Your excitement to participate, it's unbelievable. But one condition, Shabbat is off limits. No building the Mishkan, no dyeing the wool for the Mishkan. And that's the reason why when it comes to the restrictions of the Shabbat, how do I know what's permissible or what's prohibited to do on Shabbat. The Pasuk tells me, don't do any work. So I ask you a question. What does it mean, any work? So how do I know what work means in this verse? Short answer, the building of the Mishkan. In other words, whatever was necessary to do for the Mishkan, we cannot do on Shabbat. For example, the Mishkan had poles that they had a perimeter wall of the Mishkan, a fence. And in order to, to, to combine them properly, each one that the Mishkan needed to be dismantled, they wrote numbers on each pole. One, two, two, three, three, four. This way, it was very easy to assemble. Many people do this for Sukkot, right? When you put the poles and the wood. So therefore, what do we understand? Number one, I cannot write on Shabbat because writing was necessary to uh, put the poles of the Mishkan together. And like this, 38 additional labors which are described in Masechet Shabbat. But now comes the second question. Moshe Rabbeinu says, don't work on Shabbat. Okay, don't work on Shabbat. Comes the next verse, and listen to this. You're going to love this answer. Do not ignite the fire in any of your dwelling places on the day of Shabbat. And the Zohar Kadosh asks the following question. Why? Why from the 39 restrictions of the Shabbat, the only one that the Torah talks about it openly is about turning on the fire? There are a few answers. I'll give you one answer, and then I'll give you a second answer. 
The first answer is easy. Shabbat, we understand, is the holiest day of the week, correct? So imagine yourself, you have a special guest coming to your home, and you want to serve him a nice meal. So what are you going to do? Are you going <coughs> to give him a meal that was cooked a day before, or you want to cook a meal on the very same day so it's as fresh as possible? Most of us will say, I will do it on the same day. So comes the Torah and it says, even though you had in mind to cook on Shabbat day for the day of Shabbat, lo teba'aru esh. You cannot cook on Shabbat. So, and this is what everybody does. What do we do on Shabbat? We prepare everything, right? From Friday. And then we have a Shabbat plata, a hot plate, or it's called also the blech, correct? In the Ashkenazic language, it's called the blech. In the Hebrew, Sephardic, it's called the plata or the hot plate. Or some people have a crock pot. Some people have different systems that they do keep the food warm. And throughout the history, based on this pasuk, the Torah says, don't worry about cooking food on the same day. Don't turn on the fire in any of your dwelling places. Comes the Zohar Kadosh and asks, let me ask you a question. I'm going to add my two cents to the question. When the Torah says, put on tefillin, right? Does it tell you put on tefillin in any country of the world? No. The Torah says, put on tefillin. The Torah says, eat kosher. Does it tell you eat kosher? Everywhere or just the Torah tells you eat kosher? Eat kosher, no space limitation. Why in the mitzvah of not turning on fire on Shabbat, the Pasuk says, in all your dwelling places. So the Zohar Kadosh says something very deep. It says there are two, there are two areas where people live on the planet Earth and in the heavens. So far, so good. The life in the heavens, Shamaim, is all spiritual. There is no food. There is not the lock breakfast in Shamaim. There is no Sambusak in Shamaim. Mafi. Sambusak is only here. Okay? So, but the life in Shamaim is split into different sections. One is called Ganeden. How do you call the opposite side of Gan Eden? Gehinnam. What's usually Gehinnam connected to? Fire. Fire. So comes the Zohar Kadosh and it says, in the merit of the Jewish people on the planet Earth, observing the Shabbat and not turning on fire on Shabbat, we prevent that the fire of Gehinnam goes into a pilot mode is not running throughout the week. And although I'm using a physical example like fire, that means judgment. That's what it means. So the Zohar Kadosh says, in our zechut of observing the Shabbat here, we mitigate the heavenly judicial system on the day of Shabbat. You like it? it. It's heavy. It's heavy. But get ready for the next one. Because the next one, it's for us as humans. Nor has souls as neshamot. The Zohar Kadosh says, Lo teba'aru esh. Don't ignite the fire of ka'as and mahloket. Don't ignite the fire of anger or argument anywhere on the day of Shabbat. In other words, Shabbat needs to be a day of shalom, a day of peace, a day of harmony, of harmony a, a, a day that everything is good or everything is great. No misery, no drama, no anger, no mahloket. Even, even the loss of avelut, the loss of mourning, on Shabbat, they take a step back. The person comes to the synagogue. The person needs to dress like Shabbat. 
the person sits down on a regular chair at the synagogue or at home, the person sits with their family, they drink meat, they drink wine, they eat meat. Of course, there are certain restrictions for a mourner. For example, I'm sorry, a mourner cannot go up to the sefer until the end of the shiva, correct? A mourner must keep separation from his wife during the seven days of, uh, uh, of mourning. But the rest of the restrictions, they pushed aside. Why? Because Shabbat brings tranquility and harmony. Not only in the relationship between the heavens and the earth. Imagine yourself that by us refraining of doing certain things, we can have a domino effect in the heavenly judicial court system. Is unbelievable. That's why the Zohar Kadosh in Perasha Bereshit says, "Run away from three situations. Number one, don't curse yourself. Don't curse yourself, and needless to say, don't curse others, because cursing has a boomerang effect. Number one. Number two, when you need to dispose of bread." Break it into small pieces. Don't dispose of it as a big chunk. You see? Hazakovaru, look at him. Look at him. He breaks the bread. Yes. Yeah, that's what we use it for. Hazakovaru. But I ask you a favor. Don't do it to the two mega birds here because they are leaving a reminder every day. All over. I'm telling you now, go far, go to the water, don't feed the birds here because they became accustomed, they became spoiled. The other day they asked me, what happened to the sambusa today? <laughs> you know, they already know when to come and where to find the food, but they leave residue, and that residue is becoming a, 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 how do I say this? A challenge and a headache for praying, for walking around, for the elegance of our synagogue, so please be thoughtful on that department. Now, so, and the third one is escaping from Shabbat. The Zohar Kadosh writes, don't escape from the Shabbat. Don't precipitate the disappearance of Shabbat. Obviously, Shabbat finishes, finishes, move on. But to terminate the Shabbat before Actually, Shabbat stops, so to speak, it's, it's activating the heavenly court system in Shabbat. Imagine yourself, you have an, a sign that says, the Lord's breakfast dedicated by, right? Okay, by. And Shabbat, imagine yourself, fire of Gehinnam sponsored by. That's what the Zohar Kadosh is. This is not me saying this. Go to Perashah Bereshit, you'll see it. And that's a reason why the Torah uses this first concept of the Shabbat, not cooking on Shabbat. Cook before. And the Hachamim, and let's be honest here, our great, great Hachamim, in their great wisdom, they gave us formulas how to keep food warm on Shabbat. That is very easy to Today you have a hot plate. Today you have a hot water urn. Today you even have Shabbat mode water urns, Shabbat mode ovens. Now there is a new device by GE. It's called Zeman Technologies that makes your, your, your ovens friendly, full friendly for Shabbat and Yom Tov. This new thing, new thing. It comes with rabbinical supervision, GE became the pioneer for this type of system. This happened yesterday, okay? They came out unbelievable, and uh, they, are, they are making it now for refrigerators and ovens, because we need to understand, as technology moves in a certain direction, our life is becoming more and more technologically oriented. Can you imagine you buy a refrigerator today 
and it tells you, don't forget to buy milk. It's happening. You never saw it? It's there. Go to Best Buy down the block. <laughs> True. Isn't it there? Have you seen it? It has a sensor where you put the milk and outside has a digital screen and it tells you running low on milk, one quarter left, one pint left, no more milk, eggs. I'm not kidding you. This is what's happening today. Or you have the simpler refrigerators that they have LED lighting all around instead of having a light bulb. So now how do you remove the light for Shabbat? Okay, you're the Hachambashi from YouTube. Okay, that's good. You and I know this. Right, thank you. But if you have a Shabbat mode fridge, you preset it before Shabbat and automatically disconnects the light paneling of off. Or you can do the backup plan of testing to put magnets on the hinge of the door of the fridge, right? And it creates a magnetic reaction and it makes believe the fridge that is the doors are closed because the energy continues traveling and it sends a wireless message, we still connected, even though you're fooling the system, you're bypassing the system, but you need chokhmah to know all these things. You need wisdom. So Hachamim are giving us, every generation, different tactics and different techniques of how to live with the times, but live within the halachic parameters of the code of Jewish law, which at the end of the day is our GPS uh, for life. And this is the secret of our survival, generation after generation. I'm not going to repeat the names of all the sponsors of today. We say to them, thank you so much, Tiskela Mizvot, for your generosity and kindness. Your kindness and everything else keeps the synagogue going every day, literally, you know, many, many, many hours throughout the day, which is a big zahut for each and every one of us, especially in these challenging uh, times. And remember my two messages in the beginning. Try to be the one that welcomes the Shabbat instead of the Shabbat welcoming us, and let's reinforce in the three areas of the Midrash Rabbah, I believe, the power of prayer, the power of repentance, and the power of uh, Sedaka. Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Baruch